Hello, uh, good morning and welcome to the Museum of Goa for this Sunday talk. Uh, before we get into the details of the program, let me give you a brief, uh, let me briefly acquaint you with the program, the museum. So we are a progressive museum. Unlike other museums which delves with the artifacts of the past, here we dig deep into uh, contemporary history and cultural anthropology through the lenses of art and aesthetics, scientific exploration, critical thinking, and looking into the future. And at the museum, our aspiration is to excite people's aspirations and curiosity. And these Sunday talks also imbibe the same, same ethos of the museum. And uh, if you'd like to see the museum, post the program. The, the, the entrance is at the front door for the tickets, and you can get a guided tour if you prefer. Today, it gives me immense pleasure to uh, present a talk on Kazan lens. I hope this talk will bust a lot of myths, maybe uh, like the myths of Parshuram and <laughs> everything, and have a scientific understanding. And uh, it will help us marvel at the genius engineering processes our ancestors have gifted us, and maybe answer a little, uh, answer questions about how and why we should uh, live in harmony with nature. And today with us, we have uh, Bob Cyril Fernandez of Chikali Bioprocedures. That's an organization which are advocating for a sustainable uh, green Goa. And our esteemed speaker, Mr. Joe Fernandez. And uh, now I kindly request uh, Cyril Bob to come and to give an eye opener for the talk. Also, to introduce our uh, speaker and moderate this conversation. Uh, this is Nilanpur, and on behalf of Museum of Goa, I welcome you again. Please, Sirilbab. Uh, yeah, okay, Sirilbab will come. Give us two minutes, he's just on his way. Welcome to this unique uh, event, uh, which uh, most probably has brought you here out of excitement on the topic. But more than that, I think the speaker is more excited than all of us. And some of you have already heard him even before he was asked to speak. Uh, I met uh, Joe a month back when he announced this uh, talk and uh, uh, realized whatever that he will also experience now and gain whatever that he is going to place here is an immense, you know, uh, collection of knowledge that uh, he has done over 23 years of, years of his research work on this topic. Before we go into that, I would like to introduce him as someone who was born in Calcutta, did some part of schooling at St. Bartholomew Sharam, and then grew up in Delhi. He has been associated with the Goan Catholic Association, the All India Catholic Association there. He has had a five-year stint with Edward Falero also as PA, and a lot of other things. But because of his <laughs> health reasons, he has to come down and settle but he couldn't settle and then he put waded into this what he is going to present us here. When I heard him, it was four and a half, four and a half hours talk that he did non-stop. But it was not focused on the way that I would have expected someone to speak on this topic. But that is because of his age and today also you must, you know, condone him for his age. At 82, how he manages this, I really don't know. But he does. And he's still actually 28, I think, not 82, when he speaks the emotions that he puts into the whole thing. Hmm? So, so <laughs> you see, so 
But what is important today, because we, when we do our research or we think of Goa, we think of different aspects of Goa, we look from a short angle, a very narrow perspective. But here he has gone into the Ban, Levis, the Khazan, why, why Goans are in this manner, what we are, that also is explained as part of this, you know, his presentation. So I will not uh, take your time because he needs a lot of time. I don't know how in 45 minutes, a four and a half hour talk, you know, can be put up into 45 minutes. So we have tried to do that. We have said we have burned the midnight oil to try and condense it to this place. But if he wavers or if he lands it, please excuse him because of his age. Here, Mr. Joe, it's all yours. Yeah, no. Or you can. Do I need? I don't need. I don't need a mic. Can I? everybody hear me? Okay. The mic is already there. Also. So you don't okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to this. Anyway. A warm welcome to all of you and a big thank you. What I need to know is your reaction to what I am going to tell you. So let me begin. In this Bharat Mahan, we Goans are a square peg in a round hole. In agitations, we don't burn buses. We don't destroy public property. We don't parade women like they did in Manipur. And even in our schools, we don't emphasize boxing. When Adil Shah heard that Vasco da Gama was parked at Anjadeva, he sent his chief of navy, a Polish Jew, to get Vasco da Gama and his men to join Adil Shah's army, Navy Rana, and told them that if they don't join, then please kill all of them. Second, Barton Paul, in his book, Villages of Goa in the 16th century, tells us that Goans fight with their tongues. My grandmother, who was born in 1870, and from Pandavada, by the way, the place where everything is going to be uh, narrated. My grandmother, born in 1870, told me that when the raiders from the Nova Conquistas came to Sharon, they used to bind their drums on top of the hill, and the whole village used to vacate and go and sit in the fields while the raids took over. So, first of all, how many have you been to Sharawai or Diwar? Yeah, so plenty of you. I thought I would have to introduce Sharawai and Diwar to you. So, the question arises, what makes us different and why? between the rest of India and us. We are going to answer, I am going to try and answer that question for you today. The second thing is that on this map, you will see that I have shown three arrows there. This is the southwest mountain, I hope you can Three arrows are there. This is the southwest monsoon. What is happening is here, it's one detail out of three which made sure that nature was also has to be given credit for what happened. The southwest monsoon and the, uh, and the river, Mandovi river are in contrary directions. That is the first thing about Goa that we should know about this map. Now what we will do is that we will shift to the next slide which shows the Khazans and how they are situated on this same Goa map. Here are the Khazans in green. You will see that the Khazans make up 90% of the 
valueless conquistas and only 10% is out. That is why when anybody is travelling from Panjim to Margaon to Kanakona to Deva, uh, the, uh, what is that place? Uh, I have it here. Uh, Karwar. When they go to Karwar, they find the character of the people at each stop. There's a subtle change in the character. So that I wanted to show you, and the Khazans are all situated in the various conquistas which were known, I feel, as Gomantak in the past. One more thing that we have to look here is that I find there is a lot of interest, there is a lot of interest in the Khazans, but the Khazans are a result of what Darwin's theory of evolution. An ecology of flora and fauna change takes place only when the circumstances surrounding that place have changed. What has happened is that in the Khazans, we have a different ecology. As a kid, I used to walk in the Khazans in Goa, and I used to find among the rice stalks, there used to be prawns, there used to be pitoi, there's frogs, there's snails. Frogs, edible frogs, that big fellow like this. There is a walk for me, which is like an Englishman in coat tail, you know, walking like that among the virvil and things like that. It's a different, different setup at the Khazan level. And that different setup could only take place after mille what Darwin says, after millenniums. So now, we come to what do the historians in Goa say about the period of 5000 years from 4000 BC to 1000 AD. Maximus, Maximus Menezes, Administrador das Comunidades, says in one sentence, in an introduction, this first sentence, introduction to Rui Gomes Pereira, excellent work called Volume 2 Gaunkari. In that he says, pitch, darkness, envelopes the workings of the village association. I will repeat it because it's a tremendous statement. Pitch, darkness is such a vivid image that pit darkness, that we have forgotten the second part of what he says in that sentence. Village associations. A man who knew the... Okay. Pitch darkness, second part of the thing is village association. Village associations, he is telling us that in ancient times in Goa, there were village associations sitting under a ward or sitting at a man, the Dazan, the Barazan, select people had been nominated by the village to take care of the village affairs. This is a tremendous development. Okay. Uh, I have skipped, okay. I had put this slide to show those who might not be familiar with Sharao and Diwar. If you see, I could not get a physical map of either Sharao or Diwar. But whatever I could get of Sharao, I put this on the map. There is a white space. The blue green line which is there is a road that runs completely around Sharao in that. The brown area is the hills. The grey area that you see block, blocks there, that is the residential quarters in Sharao. Why I wanted to tell you was that the fields are, and in the case of Rivar, which we are going to show you, is seen from Ribanda, that the scene shows that 
दीवार 60 परसेंट इज बिलो द हाई टाइड लाइन एंड इन सराउंड फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द लाइन इज बिलो द हाई टाइड लाइन इन अदर वर्ड देर इज अवी प्रोटेक्टेड बोथ द आईलैंड एंड इट एन सर्कल्स द टू आईलैंड कंप्लीटली ओके दिस इज द व्यू फ्रॉम the bandar of dewar there's a island in the middle and then on the left hand side we have sharam as you can see this total piece from here to there is completely below the high tide line the question is if this is the khazan and sharam the fields are khazan that it means that the event took place on those islands which made sure that the ecology the conditions which were there they changed what was it that changed according to me the khazans and everything are dependent on the levees which were built so the question arises who built the levees and why were they built that becomes the main question of what is that Okay, so who is the expert? So now we come to 4100 BC to 1000 AD. There are three things we have already discussed. What Maximus Menezes said about pitch darkness, but he also said that village associations exist. Now, if we discuss. or we think about sumeria which was considered by uh, historians as history began at sumer because they were the first civilizations we talk of egypt persia or greece which were the first four main uh, uh, civilization in every case we find that the system of government was a king nobles and priests the public and the slaves and this continued with them from let us say 4000 bc past the middle ages until the people sandy got wise and they said we want to have be able to take decisions on our own regarding what we are what is you can't tell us what we have to do we want to participate in the action administer in other words they were asking for democracy which already existed in the villages in this thing in goa because we were doing that so in fact what was happening was that in the villages in goa you had democracy already existing but they didn't know the word for it so when the first time we find some mingling some reports of what history is goa's history is about so what they did was that they started from the time of the kadamba king we sandy realized that god saraswats are given the task of collecting the taxes from the village god saraswats are given the task of collecting the taxes from the village. and so you find a brilliant idea coming from the komneda the muli the spokesman of the village he tells that what you do is if taxes are to be paid then what we will do is the muli's field will be the first to be harvested so that he goes and tells whoever the authority to whom he has to report that okay tomorrow the my field is being harvested please send your men so that your share the chalk the quarter 25% tax you can collect it while the harvest is going on on the field then they can go and so they will know to whom what to collect from each and every field as the harvest is brought in excellent idea at a time when nothing is written and that is the superb intelligence i find existing among our ancestors 
excellent and i'll be giving you another other example so first we have so what happens in all the countries where the feudal system is going on uprisings take place we have the war of independence in us we have the round heads and the royalists fighting and finally executing king charles because he refuses to have a parliament in france they knock off the complete nobility using the guillotine in russia the bolshevik revolution takes place joseph stalin kills 2 million in china mao zedong starts purges another 2 million and after 14th december in delhi when we had musicians uh stewards at in delhi 2 million people were killed during the transition that took place from britain to them i am just wondering when india celebrates the century in 2047 who will be there to mourn for those two million in the first week of august my dad was in lahore we came down to goa first week of august 1947 to get away we knew things are very bad not a single person was killed in goa why have we see i get emotional why have we as hindus christians and muslims being able to live together without harming one another it's a question to be answered to what why because we had democracy already there was no need to for any bloodshed to recover to get into democracy so according to me it didn't matter whether it was kadambas whether it was mohammed of ghazni whether the kings were staying in vijayanagar and doing thing when the king portugal king heard that there is a system already in place for collecting taxes he told afons maxia to note the condition the terms and conditions he met the gangas and he couldn't understand what they were saying he told they say that he pulled his hair in despair what was the gangas telling they didn't have a word for democracy they had to explain to him what they were doing and the only way they could explain was they said what we do is in the temples when we accept prasad he said we all stand in line and my right elbow has to be higher than the left elbow of the fellow standing on this side of me and my left elbow has to be lower than the right elbow of the fellow standing on this side what did he want to tell what did he want to tell in that example of right elbow higher on this side and a left elbow lower than the right hand of the other fellow what did they want to tell they wanted to tell we are all equal they wanted to tell but afons maxia had been sent by the king in portugal till that time they never knew there was a word called democracy he was in the feudal system so he couldn't understand what the gaunkas were trying to explain to him so one of the reasons why we don't have any killings we are behavior is good is the only way to put it behavior is good so there is no need to do anything our attitude is you know things have been all right for 5000 years do the total okay so now we have come i have not for the okay so now we have come there is only one more thing i want to tell and that's the third thing which uh, thing is there 
The third thing in the thing is the code of Kumbhidas had its beginnings in ancient in Vedic times. I met a Gaunkar while I was writing this uh, Rekam for a Gohan and he was singing wonderful praises about the Kumbhidas and I asked him, have you read the code? And he said, no, but you ask anybody. I went to Salvador the Mundo, he was praising the Asharam Kumbhidas. Have you read the code? No, but you ask anybody. See, this is the attitude finally that we have arrived at. Asusega, the attitude has led us to accept whatever people are saying. Okay. 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 To accept whatever it is that we are saying. All three things which I have been talking about, the association, the village associations, uh, the code of Komnidas, and an excellent, they, all historians talk, while talking about Goa, they say, a brilliant agro-based society existed in Goa. The brilliant a agro society that existed in Goa was the tailors, the Kunbis, the Gaudas, the Danga Shepherds and the Zolmi. I'll be referring to all these in one word as the Kunbi. And all three are related to one thing, the recovery of land by pushing out the sea. So now we come so now we come to the period 4001 BC to thing. I think I have already talked about that. The pitch darkness the thing yes, yes. and the year after. So now we come to the second part. Part is how did nature give us the gifts? This is what happened 66 million years ago. There is a national oil purchase club that came into our universe. It was traveling at high speeds, 20,000, and Jupiter, which is 800 times the size of the Earth, it started to change its direction, came into Jupiter, and like a catapult, it was thrown into Earth's path and it hit Earth. The center of that Earth, which I have shown, is actually the molten lava, which is at the center of the Earth. It hit the earth at a place called the Yucatan Peninsula in, in Mexico. 70% of the, everything flash in a flash became sulfuric acid and dust. The earth was covered for three years. Anyway, what you do is that you can look up just the asteroid 66 million years ago and you will get all the details of how when it happened, the sound went around the earth seven and a half times. So that provided, what happened was that it created cracks in the earth's surface and they say that the lava came out to form the gods. So now we have the second thing regarding nature's bounty to go on. The first, as I said, was the contrary direction in which the two the southwest monsoon and the river flows. The Ghats provided the slope for bringing the water down at a tremendous speed. Now we go to the next, or the third clue was provided. That is the Yucatan Peninsula, where the asteroid landed. Now we go, uh, before that I just want to tell you, there is another theory there that the force came from below the guards, cracked open the surface and again the same result. That, but that, they say, took place in 65.5 million years ago. So whatever it is, the formation of the guards is important to give the slope. It's only 60 kilometers from the guards to the seashore. Now we come to the next slide which shows this shows our geography coverage. The earth is tilted 
25.3 degrees. So what happens is the sun rays have to go to the Arctic Circle, and the day there is of six months long. And as you can see, while well, the day is six months long in summer there, down below it is six months for the Antarctic Circle. Then the reverse happens during the winter. Antarctica gets light, daylight, and the top is <coughs> in the darkness. During this time, you have to remember that the Earth is two thirds water. At the equator, at the center of that equator, the sun is shining overhead, so the hot air rises. So there are always winds blowing all over from the sea to the land. So what happened was that during this time. Every year, the air that is going to the uh, Arctic circles, both the Arctic circle, is carrying water in it, but it falls down as rain because of the temperatures. The result is that year after year, the water in the oceans is getting depleted, and finally a stage arrives when so much water has been taken out from the ocean that. This, at the side where the uh, water has receded back, that is all available to the winds. Dust is now being carried along with the water vapor to the Arctic Circle. And as a result of that, the fresh ice that is falling is unable to reflect the sun's rays, the heat back into the atmosphere. The ice starts melting and the cycle gets reversed. So here is the thing showing the result of the sea levels. Twenty-four thousand. That twenty-four says that it that was the level at twenty-four, twenty-three, twenty-sixteen. And then what happened is that we come on top there where that brownish line is at four thousand BC. The oceans returned to their level, but at this level. In 10,000, 12,000 BC, the seas were 410 feet below what they are today. That means, if from Kalangut you walk to Mapsa, Sharon, Diva, Old Goa, Malga, you could go from one place to the other, all these places, without wetting the feet. No wonder we could exist because the rain at that time was 10 inches. How do we know that this is correct? The Indian Institute of Ocean Geography, they did a study of the sea surrounding Dwarka. Dwarka is the city established by Lord Krishna. So they have done, and they found that there is a city 20 kilometers out in the sea, which, when they carbon tested, carbon tested the wood in that piece of wood. They found it was dating to 5,500 BC. Another 10 kilometers further down, they found another city. Again, another piece was tested, and that city was found to be 9,500 BC. So here we have what was the situation in Goa, and that the rains returned to the. Current levels in 4000 BC. In other words, barns could only be built from if they were built. They couldn't be built in 10,000 BC. They couldn't be. They had to be built post 4000 BC. So now we have got one date when the thing was done. What happens is that. The three things which I have told you, that what is the next? Yeah, the three things which I have told you, the contrary direction of the Mandavi River and the thing, the gusts and the rains finally means that the heavy rains which are going to come with when the oceans reach the current level. 120 inches. I find that would be the minimum. The rains are going to bring silt from the gas down to 
where surround and the wall are situated. They take it right up to Miramar and at Miramar a sand bar forms because the Arabian Sea is not allowing that silt to move out to the ocean. After the rains are over, that silt, the ocean again pushes and all these become islands and settled around in the war. Now in 10,000 BC, another thing took place. Prior to 10,000 BC, man was a hunter-gatherer. Yeah. No, but let it be. So actually what that thing shows is that silt is forming at 4000 BC on the lower pictures. As you can see, the silt is forming there. But what I would like you to understand is, one thing, what I would like you to understand, this is not exact copy, I have to compress all this. This is a cross section from Govori to Old Goa. Going past Sharam, so there is a one kilometer between the Sarao and Kovari, between Sarao and Diwar is one and a half kilometer, and then between Diwar and Old Goa is about three kilometers of silt on both sides. You saw that on the picture. Here is the thing. Islands for me in the middle of the ocean because the silt is now being sent back to where they are. Yeah. This is the hunter-gatherer stage and now in 10,000 BC in the place where Sumer, Irak and Irak exist, they discovered that there are two types of grasses, one we call weeds and the other one is where the grass gives seeds. Millet which survives on 10 inches of rain, wheat and barley which survive on 40 inches of rain and rice is found in the hinterland in China and it takes a thousand years for that information to come down to Shanghai. So somewhere between 10,000 and 4,000 BC the idea of rice comes down and in Goa this we, what we call the Kumeri type of cultivation took place which is slash and burn. You slash the vegetation to there to create a level piece of field, you throw seeds, you grow the rice. After three years you find that the ground is depleted, you move to a new place. That was what is called Patikrit in, 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 in India. We call it Kumir uh, collection. What happened then was that the formation of the silt in the war, suddenly somebody, a genius, the Diwar people, they get an idea. If we can get rid of the salt from that huge level piece of ground that is there, we can become permanent farmers. There is no need to move. Always we can have time, if we spend five, time, five months of the year growing rice, you are getting a return of 5000 percent. Enough food can be grown to last the whole family for the whole year. And you don't have to move. So according to me, the Diwar people were the first ones to decide that, okay, here is the place where we can feel and we don't have to move. You can stay here, standard. Yes. So now they have to build a levy to do this. And the levy they decide to build is this one. You can see the red line. Why would they build that? According to me, this is the only conjecture that I have made that they built the levy cutting across here. But to build that levy, they would have had to talk with the hills. There are three bunches of hills. One is Pieta. Three hills are at Samathayas, that is my grandfather's place. And one is where the Holy Spirit Church is in Diwar. They decide to 
build us as human beings and since levees have to be built in summer they built that levee in the red line which is across the and that means they did not take into consideration that levee was brought side to the monsoon the storm in those days were very powerful yeah so what is happening here in the war the war faces the worst part is situated the worst out of all the out of all the places in the mandavi delta the war is situated at the worst place this is what happens at fort aguada on the left then city that pena the the say pena the franca and porvoli is growing the height is growing higher and higher here is gone for yatino the field the ridge that runs to bangoli then you have from old goa the ridge coming right up to where the bandar is so the the a has, is getting stronger as it goes and finally the war is facing the worst part of it okay oh so actually the idea was born i only wanted to say the idea was born in the war because of that now we go to the three phase i realize that if everything happened at a time when there is no paper there is no paper if something has happened then the only way to transmit that information would be to grandmother states so in divar the grandmother tale is once upon a time there were many islands and then somebody joined all the islands together but nobody has asked why should that time if only 75 let us say 75 people was staying on the island why would you start doing all this work making a full levy discussing with all the other islanders i'm sure the other islanders would not have agreed to help in the project until they had been interaction between the thing so one of the reasons could be that the idea of different people being selected from the different inside to sit down and decide okay you take the rock the other collector said you do this i do that so an organization is needed which was given by the village associations at that time so now what has happened is that the story in sharam which my grandmother told me and many other grandmothers have told just grandson is that once upon a time the old janmara baba we are sidalgos in ancient times when outsiders came into sharam they had to remove their hats children went behind and flip the hats off their head or the other stuff was slight change in the version stones were kept in the balcons to throw at the people who didn't take off the hats so my question was what had happened in sharam to take off the hats something must have been happened by which because paper was not available they wanted to make sure that that information was not lost so if somebody new comes to sharam and i tell him you have to take off your hat the natural question would be why and then they would tell him why he has to take because the first according levies according to me were built in sharam so we have four levies but before that now i have to tell you what happened to the divar levy divar levy was built broadside to the monsoon so when it broke down they realized that they would be without food and according to me that situation became very drastic they had to have two solutions if you yeah. can you put that yeah they had to prove two solutions one was the long term solution 
and one was the short term solution. The long term solution and according to me was that if you see all the divine villages are in the they are in the leeward side of the Salim Ali bird sanctuary. It means that the mangroves in the Salim Ali bird sanctuary were planted by the Divarkas to protect their villages from the storm which had destroyed all the way, all the bomb. That was the short term, that was the long term solution. Short term was that the people in quite suffered from this. They must have immediately a field and the best option was the Dangar shepherds who were in Chara who were looking after goats. According to Moti Chandra, who has written about ancient trade routes in southern India, there the Dangar shepherd annually had a 400 km journey going from Karnataka into Goa and back home. So, the man who came over to discuss had to make some sort of concessions to the shepherds to be able to get their support so that they can have the goats if they were in a really serious crisis, if they could have the goats to tie them until one year or two years that they need to tie over until a new field is created. So, now that is the second tale which I told. Now I am going to tell you a third tale. This tale was told by my grandmother because she is a Christian. According to me, the idea of Fidalgos, which you saw all the fellows, that is the picture of a painter. A painter who drew that picture was a Goan, 1525. And the pictures, a lot of 76, have been found in a in Kasana Tenze Museum in Rome. Kasana Tenze was the cardinal in charge of the Dominicans and that is how it looks like those pictures ended up in his possession. Because in those days, if you owned a book, you were following the devil. Because whatever was the truth was in the Bible. Anything else written outside of that which you have over is contrary to God's instructions. So what happened was that this axe, you can see, that is why the axe, the story is changed. And in those days, the story can be changed because what the Purohit told you was the truth. You, there was no TV, no news newspaper. So what the Purohit is telling you from the temples, that is nothing. And he said, Siddhalgos are the cause of this, so that is why. So now we come to the story, the final story regarding the Hindu version of what happened in Chara. They don't say that the act was removed. So I decided, I have made a big mistake all these years, I have been talking to Christians. I must go and talk to the tiller, somebody who worked on the bonds when he was a kid, somebody who is at least 80 years old. And the first house that I walked into was a gold mine. A gentleman called Dasra. He said, I have worked on the levees. And he told me the technique. But first I will tell you his story. The story which his grandmother had told him. The man who taught us how to build the barns came from the east. He came on a horse. The horse died at Ambari. Here is the whole tale. Now we have to ask, why is there a difference in tales between the Christian version and the Hindu version? Now in 1540, or sometime during that time, the Portuguese government made a rule. The king's religion is the religion of the people. If you are not a Christian, you got to go out. So, according to me, no decision is being taken in the village which concerns them without it being discussed at the Komnidat level. That means the Dazan, the Barazan, when the whole of Shara went unconverted 
and next Saturday the whole of Diwar went and converted and next Saturday Vatim went and converted, Vatim is near pillar, the salt pan. It means, according to me, that the three Komidas were in touch with one another and decided, because it was August and you know, they get possessed. The question that would be asked for the Purohits is, what should we do? What does God want us to do? And so the Purohits, according to me, gave a decision after, in the Komidat said, that we should all convert. That is why whole conversions took place, 900 plus in Charao, 1200 plus in Divar, and we don't know how many, but at midnight from the temple they went to the church and all got converted. So, at August, in the month of August, it's the fields, the crops are on the fields. They could not let that rot because crops, all your wealth and everything was measured in those days according to the amount of arable land that you have. So they sent their children out. And only those who are needed for the harvest were retained. How far are we in the law? <laughs> you can Just give me a bit of water. Yeah, thanks. So, the, those who were not needed left. In 1775, around yeah. that time, the British, the British forced the Portuguese to withdraw the Inquisition. With that, the Hindus returned. And according to me, their version is the correct one. Because, not only because what happened later on, but because they were the original thing. So, we now know that there was a man and they know the name of the man. It is, he was called Piso Ravalo. Piso Ravalnath. Why did they call him Piso? Because he came on that horse, he sat with them and he told them, we have experience in the war, we can push out the sea and we can create land where there is no food. Get it? And what do the people, the guys, the shepherds who are listening to him, what they say? Peace of Maradon. That is why he is called Peace. So now, yeah, so we have seen that. Now, uh, okay, yeah, let it be here. Now, once the levies were destroyed, what happens? You have at that right hand corner, the most extreme side, that is the place where the Holy Spirit Church is. It's on a hill. On, on, when clear weather is there, you can make out the Holy Spirit Church in the world. So it looks like this gentleman, Pisa Ravana, from there he could look into Shoram. And he saw this space here, which is there. That was a lagoon in Pandavada. Pandavada is at the corner, at the turn around the year, at that part. So he saw that it was a lagoon and that they could push out the sea from there with the technique, with the information, with whatever knowledge they had, they could put. Because two ridges of hills were required, that would be broadside to the southwest monsoon, so the fields would be safe. But the first thing to do was to have a field at a place where it was above the high tide line. Why that field then in Shara, which is within that green line, there are only four fields in Shara within the green line and one is at that Pandavada place. It means definitely there was a storm in Divar in which their lands were destroyed. And therefore, they had to make a deal with the shepherds there to get access to the goats. So that, then you find the one thing, all, there are four levies there. So we we'll have to go back to this, yeah. We go to Pandavada, Pandavada, the Goa man. 
kolme ja Anyway, one of the reasons I remember my son-in-law, he asked me, says, Dad, everywhere in the world there are levees. And you see this picture here. This levees, this is a picture from the University of Pizza showing what happens to a levee when it is broadside. None of the levees in Goa are broadside. That is why they have lasted 6,000 years. Every levy which we have, all the levies, they are built in such a way that at the initial point, one, two kilometers, they run parallel with the winds. Yeah. What is levy? Levy, levy. Ban, 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 sorry. Ban. Sorry, okay. okay. Levies ban. and bans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Ban. Ban, okay. So the reason why the Sharaun levies, are, I mean the Goa levies, have lasted for 6,000 years is that they run parallel with the winds for the first 2-3 kilometers. That is the thing. How do we know that was became the thing? Because every levy, now we move on to the thing. See, this is the second, this will go later. Regarding this is the erosion techniques, how to contain the erosion. You must have an anthol. I'll explain this later in my next paper. We'll go to the next. So here you see, the levees that are built in Pandavado, they decided that our labor is, we don't have enough labor to do the whole thing in one job. We got to cut it in sections. So these three lines, four lines that you see there, across that blue lagoon are the sections which were cut off. So what they did was, afterwards, afterwards, they put up a temple right at the head there of that lagoon and they called it the Piso Raulo Temple. But the full name then was, I think, changed to Devika Krishna Piso Raulna Temple. That was destroyed by the Portuguese Yes, that whole piece was given to the gods. That whole piece, the first section, was given to the gods. But the sit, according to me, from this section was taken out and used on the field, which is the first field in Chara, above the high tide line. They wanted to make sure that they don't lose that crop in the coming season when Crops can be planted. Move, next, let's see. Ah, here is the thing. Now this is where my house, Sherlock's residence is actually my house. On the space. And you see this 150 by 150 meters. This is above the height I have. Now one of the things, okay, I'll explain it later. These khazans are these uh, things, this colored line which are there. And to make sure that a prompt job was done. They made sure that this spring which begins in the mountains, the blue, they have created an aqueduct there to make sure that the water is carried all along as the work continues from one, one section to another section to another so that the fields are completed at double quick time. Now one of the thing is that I was always asking why the name of Pandavado? They say that Lord Krishna and his mother Devika Krishna had come to Sharon. She had come to meet his son. It was only at the last meeting that somebody provided a map which shows that in the Komita records it is not Pandavado but it is Pandivade. Pandivade. Kalapuratam divade ratam rodu naka. It's an old folk song. Divar was known as divade. Pan divade means little divar. Pan dudu. Pan dudu. The smallest coin of Diana. Pan divade means 
little Diwali. People were staying here from Diwali who were affected by the storm. And that I came to know only last because somebody said I have a plan and he showed the Diwali. Somebody must have said Vado is singular, Vade is plural. Why is this Pan Diwade? We'll make it Pan Diwado. Put a zero there. Okay, that is another storm theory. Yeah. Now we come to the location of, of Manos. I feel that the ancestors made sure, because paper was not there and nothing was in writing, that made sure that whatever is to be credited with the news, we'll do that. Peace or Ravana is made into a god. So that his name is not forgotten. What they did was, they had built a temple at the start and they said, called it peace or avalnan. At the end, they realized that they have made a singular blunder. They put another temple there and all the Hindus think that the peace or avalnan temple and this one which is called shana or avalnan is a different person. It is not a different person. At the head of the project and at the end of the project, they have put piso at the start when nothing was proved, he was saying that it can be C can be pushed out and we can be. But whether it would be successful or not, they didn't know. So at the end of the project, they put another temple there and they called it Shano Ravanath Temple. Now we come, now we come to how the Manos is there. Please see how. In front of the actual manos, there is always the still waters. The, the barn, the levee, it swings outward and then goes on. And so that is the main feature. According to me, the manos were discovered in Sharam. When they exited the waters of the first section, they realized that in the next high tide, fish and the silt is still coming. They realized we got to control the waters, we do the man. So what did they do to make sure that Pandavado got credit for the... They must have realized that we got to do credit for the Pandavado thing. So in the 1940s, when the fisher folk entered Pandavado, their cry was, Zai Gebai, Zai Gebai was the cry when she was sold fish in Pandavar. But as soon as she stepped out of Pandavar, the cry was changed to Zai Gobai, Zai Gobai. They've lost that, you know, the U is being used like Am Aap Avartum. That Aap Avartum is taking place here. So they gave credit to Pandavar for the discovery of the Pandavar. So the ancestors, without having knowledge, knowing anything to write about. They were doing these fantastic things which, you know, which we don't think they had enough brains to do it. Now we will come to the levies. Oh, first let me tell you about the land arrangement because we keep on talking about Harappa and this. So just in case, the brown part is the hillside. From the hillside, you have a tank where always within 200 yards of, of in the whole of Sharao, there are tanks built. According to me, they provided for the Pajers, which I was which explained here, as well as the fulfilling to fill the, the those areas where dips are there, they use these tanks to break. Because we must remember that in the olden days, every house in the temple in had a paroi. A paroi enables you to use it as a fulcrum to lift rock, push rocks and things like that. Every house had. And they say that in the whole of India, copper was, and that paroi was made of copper by the way. And they say that in 5000 BC, copper was known throughout India. So there you have, then you have the 
three houses. That portion is the residential area. They cut that piece here to make the road, push that mud onto the side to prevent, to control the erosion and that place where you see one house with two houses, that is called an unthorn. It is meant to contain the erosion. Or if that is not there, you have, you have a point or a thorn at the bottom to collect the erosion that is taken. Then they realize that we got to now from the high tide line. Remember this is all high tide line which I have shown there. Going right across and this is the high tide line. Everything else, all the fields are below this. Then they realize that to reduce the workload because they are only 75, the fields have to be terraced. If the fields are terraced, in between these two fields, there is something called moyos. Has anybody heard that name? Moyos. It is a drop in the layout of the field. There is a drop which is one and a half foot to three feet at two places. When I went there, because people were saying that a brilliant agricultural society existed in Goa, so I went to the field where, can I see some brilliance around here? And I at once realized that the field had been built before Christ was born because clouds cannot be used on that field. With the three foot drop and a one and a half foot drop, you cannot use the clouds. All the fields in Sharam are coming from top to bottom. Narrow things as like this. So there is no place to take the wide turns that are needed with a plow. So that happened there. So to save the work, the amount of silt needed, you do this terrace thing, then finally here at the end where the now the Kazan is going to start, that place there is a drop of three feet. That becomes the flow level, the low tide level. We go right, then you have the lark, then you have the ponies and the toy. Then you have a wonderful invention called an Uthodbo, where if the monsoon failed, they knew that the water in the Mandavi river was only 0 0.1, 0 0.2 salt content because it could not go out of the sea. The salt water is coming on one side. So the Uthodbo was used to make sure that the crops are not lost. That was the Uthadva. Everybody in the village has forgotten. And the fellow, when I talked to him about Uthadva, I can't even remember where I got that information. He used to say, how the hell did you come to know about the Uthadva? Next to that, you have the band, you have the, what is it called? Pawni and the Kurwal. Okay, let's do it. Cons are those stones which are put every 100 meters. Cons were put at the side to make sure that the tide doesn't affect the side of the lawn. Then you have the low, what is that low I found? Low. Low. Yeah. low, okay. Low is, I will have to show them that picture. what the low is. Show so the picture that. Yeah, okay. The low is there. Without the low, you can't build the barn. Because you have three hours in which the tide is going to come and chikol at once in water mixes with the water. So you have to have the low to put the, to put it as soon as the chikol is there so that the water does not affect the thing. Without the low, you can't build the barn. Then you have the utarwa. What is the utarwa? All these are features of it. Yeah, all these are features which are there. So it shows you that the whole village that is on those sides which you have seen where those are kantons. On the other side, the three rods going up in the river, they are called Ari. They are meant, the Portuguese allowed them to be rented to the villagers who supplied seamen to their baby. So here you have, in this map, you have, and the fact that the storms were very severe during that time in 4000 BC, is the division of land. Land was divided into Marod and Marod. In the Marod, you can't build a house. All houses, residential places have to be in the Marod. So, okay.
Now, in the Goa University, there was one year back, there was an article in Goa Net in which the God Sarasot claimed that they had built a barns using what is called bamboos and the hearth and the wet nature. Tosra told me nothing doing. He says it was the tides, it was the moon phases which were used to go. And so he narrates to me a poem which he had to learn by heart. Ekadas, Duadas, Triadas is because 11 was considered the most uh, fortune, uh, auspicious, auspicious day, they always began at Ekadas. When the full moon, here is the thing now, the Ekadas starts. The levies can be repaired only where that 11 exists. You start counting and when you come to that Ekadas, the, those three days, because what is happening is for seven days, according to the month, uh, say, the thing is going, levels are going down, then for seven days the levels are coming up. So you got to use the last three days, whether it's high tide or low tide, reversal is taking place. Only on those three days you got to get into the water. Now if at, let us say, in 4000, 2000 BC, when the but the levees were built. If you are building it, when the tides are seven feet, you are in danger of getting drowned. So the way of doing it was during the monsoon, not during the monsoon, outside the monsoon, you used the poem and the workers knew when to report for work. And the three hours that were used, were used to patch up the side of the, here is the low. This is at Madel. Those of you who are there at Madel at low tide will see that this low is there. Yeah, I that is the low which was used at the bottom of the levee so that you could work on top. These are the moyos, the levels that are working. Everywhere else in Thailand, Vietnam and all you see the curve of the hill is used for the fields, but not in Goa. It shows they were built at a different time. What is the then finally, what becomes, here is that map with Pandewad was written there, Pandewad. What is the place, so when were the levees built? According to me, the information regarding Ravalnath, if we know the date of his birth, we shall know within 50 years when the levies were built. According to me, the information is with the Ravalnath temple in Masai. They are the only ones who have shown that he has got a machete in his hand and that there is a white horse. But there is something which they had on the website which they have removed now. What they said in the website is that he was protector of the elements. Why should Pisa Ravalnath be given a title of protector of the elements? God. He is a God, protector of the elements. Why should he be given the title? It means that after the levees were built in Pandavada, storms were very frequent because of the borrowed and the marauded difference between the land. And what they did was that they made sure that when, the, sorry, what happened was that there were other storms in which all fields in Goa got destroyed or most of them, but the ones that were in Pandavada between the, between the two broadside hills, they survived. So that is why he got the title of protector of the elements. So I think. These are the pictures of Ravana. I hope we get there. So that I think is the close. Thank you for this. I just wanted to say one final thing. If we throw a six, if we roll a dice and it comes out six, I am told 
when I gave the information to, to three, four dots or as well, not a single one has come back to me to report on what the thing. They say it's too far fetched. If you roll a dice and it comes out six, you'll say I'm lucky. Second time you roll the same dice and it comes out six, you'll say God is with me. Third time, fourth time, fifth time, everything is showing that the levees were built ages ago. There is a horse. I forgot to mention that horse. The horse places, they say that the horse came with the Aryans 1500 BC. But a horse carriage with full wheel has been found at a place called Sonali near Delhi. And because in the olden days when a chief died, what they did was whatever were his possessions were buried along with him to make sure that he survived. They said he will be requiring all these things in the next slide. So they used to bury those things with him. So that gravesite has been dated 2200 BC. So according to me, at least they learned to ride a horse on bare bike at least 200, 300 years before that. So I placed the levees, the building of the levee between 4000 and 2000 BC. Thank you for listening. <laughs>
Dwarkas, uh, also known very much for building bus. They were taken to Bodwale. Yes. Is that the cardboard cars? Are they the cardboard cars? No, the mini edition. Uh, ah, okay. No, I do not know. Then Sajidhi of people there. Yes, 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 Sajidhi of people there. I have a pen here. We must talk sometime. She has a question for you. Uh, hi, sir. Yeah, I wanted to ask. So you had mentioned the tribals briefly, the Velips and the Tantras and all the tribals. Yeah. I wanted to know what is the connection that we have, that Goans today have to them, if oh they have left completely God. alone. Get me to trouble. <laughs> Either one, one or two things happen. See, the Kunbis, you have to understand, the Kunbis were experts at whatever was related to the field. They decided that writing down something, that is why in Konkani we don't have a script. They said, whether whatever was your God, Dio Paradis Dio, entitled to whatever God you were behaving, whether he was what, a Kul Devta, Gram Devta, or your personal God. Dio Paradis Dio was inclusive of whatever God you were praying for. You are, he is telling you that may your God look after you. And at the same thing, Dyobari Rath means may your God look after you tonight. It didn't matter. One of the reasons why we are Susekas, Dyodhitala, don't worry about tomorrow. Dyodhitala, Pirajit Mue. These are the expressions I used to hear when I came down here in 1947. Pirajit Mue, Sabah of course. All the, you heard something in Pirajit. <laughs> no, Pirajit is penance. Penance. Pirajit is penance. So, this is so brilliant that I, I'm just kind of, my question going forward to the elements of this design, traditional design, ancient design. Which design are we talking about? Design engineering. This is engineering. This is ancient, engineering, yeah. Ancient engineering. Yeah. I'm using contemporary words. Because I have not talked okay. about the yeah, I'm, I'm, This is pure no, engineering. Uh, land management, reclamation land in today's language. Yeah. Now, at that time, there were those materials available. Today, there is a lot of attachment to those materials and a debate about it, that only those materials from the past can work. Do you have any views on that? No, but I know, for example, I have not talked to you about the aqueduct. From the hill onwards, they have made sure that the aqueduct becomes slowly narrow and narrow when, when the thing is, when the water is running, let us say at one level. See the brilliance, eh? They have made the aqueduct going narrower and narrower and narrower so that the water which is pushed forward along with that. Speed increase. Yes, the speed increase. Secondly, what they have done is to make sure that the field on the uh, above the high tide line, there was enough water for that. They made the outlet of the dug of pitch where they uh, pitch on the floor of the uh, spring and took that, according to me, the mud there to level the first field, which is about the high tide. But they needed to make sure that water was available. So what they have done is, they have narrowed the first hole so that the water can be controlled outside as it goes. And then the next hole, as the holes go there, the channels across the road and things like that, are going smaller and smaller so that you know the water can be held at each level. <laughs> May I extend the question? The study that you have done up to now is about the systems. I'm leaving it to you. Eh? And these, no. yes. So, uh, are there references of each of these elements? No, I mean, my, I, have put, I have given the, that, uh, the places where I have given the references. Those are the only references. The rest has all come either by deduction. 
this thing had to happen. A storm had to take place in the world for them to come there. Then it is confirmed because it is pondered. Because I was wondering where the hell did the people stay? They were starving. They needed to be in Pandavada so that the work could be completed as soon as possible. So everything that uh, Pisa Ravalna, according to me, was a young man. Either the Devis were built by his family and he was there and saw the work being done and then realized, and there's another thing I didn't know, then realized that the levies must be uh, uh, must be running with the wind and the fields must be within the within the broadside to the thing. That means that he knew about the southwest monsoon 2000 years before he Pallas knew wrote about the monsoon. He saw Ravalnath knew about the monsoon winds, which direction they were blowing. He may be a Kavi from that uh, village of uh, Piyada, because then they could go for fishing up and down the Mandavi river. So there's so many, you know, things are still coming up, but I'm hoping that somebody else now follows up with what I Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot for coming everybody. I have some books here which I have written. They are humorous books. One is about our uh, traditions called Requiem for a Bone. It's 300 rupees. And the other one is Konkani Cocktail. I wrote Konkani Cocktail because the government is not interested in us learning Konkani, the Romans. Whereas I find that if it was not for the Roman script, Goa would not be having all that money coming in. We are finding that jobs are very easy to get abroad. We understand when English is spoken. And these days, if you use Cortana, you find that the machine speaks 50% correct content. <laughs> Uh, uh, there's a small token of appreciation from our side. I would request uh, Madam Norma if you can please. Wonderful, eh? Say thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, doctor. So thank you everyone for coming.